Adopting Ed Tech, FERPA and COPPA for Educators. My name is Amelia Vance, and I'm the Director of Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. Today, we're going to pretty quickly understand as much as we can how federal student privacy laws, FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, apply to ed tech adoption. So some key definitions, since we're at the beginning of a new section in our training about education technology. So what is ed tech? This recur refers to the companies that provide learning management systems, education apps, and any other software designed and sold to support students and teachers, whether or not used directly by students. So this could incorporate, for example, the student information system, the system used to take attendance, the system used to track student allergies, as well as the direct apps on student tablets, games that students may play, um, or other technologies that are adopted through the school. Third party is another term that we've heard a little bit in our training so far, and we'll continue to hear throughout this section. So third party refers to any person or organization who is not directly employed by the school system, often a commercial company providing ed tech, but it could also apply to a nonprofit partner like a tutoring organization, an outside researcher, an auditor to ensure compliance, any third party that doesn't work directly for the school system. Service provider is another term that we may use periodically throughout this section. Perhaps the best example is a company that may provide cloud storage. So it allows other companies to store data on its servers. This type of arrangement is common in the business world because that way each individual company does not need to be a specialist in storing data. Businesses typically have a variety of service providers with whom they share data and generally service providers are not allowed to access or use data except to provide the service requested by its client. This is a common arrangement that is often described in ed tech company privacy policies. This may also be referred to as a subcontractor. The limitations that I mentioned about those subcontractors or service providers not being allowed to access or use data except to provide the service requested by its client should be reflected in the terms of service privacy policy or any contractual agreements to ensure that that is taking place. And then generally our last term product, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory. So with that, let's jump in. We talked a little bit about FERPA earlier in the training, protecting student privacy when using ed tech isn't just the right thing to do. It's also a legal requirement. FERPA requires schools to either get consent before sharing student information or adhere to special privacy requirements. Data can't just be shared with anyone. If FERPA is violated, the school can get in trouble and penalties can include the school being investigated uh, or losing all of its federal funding. This hasn't happened, but it's very likely that a penalty won't be losing federal funding, but instead whoever accidentally disclosed data, shared data inappropriately, potentially having some repercussion for their job. But even with that, that's not the biggest problem. Instead, breaking the law risks breaking trust with students and with parents who rely on schools to protect their data. So oftentimes when you're sharing data with an ed tech company, you're using FERPA school official exception. This exception allows student data to be shared without consent from the parent or student if the ed tech company is doing something that the school would otherwise use internal staff for 
In an ideal world, if they had unlimited resources, everybody would build their own email system and fancy learning management system and math games and reading games. But since we don't live in an ideal world, we're just pretending we do for the purposes of this element. The company uh, must also have a legitimate educational interest. So they need the information from the school in order to provide whatever service they're giving to the school. The school should try to only give companies access to the information they need to do whatever they've asked them to do. Data can only be collected, used, and shared by the company for the original purpose it was collected for. And the company has to be under the direct control of the school. And we'll talk about what that means on the next slide. So FERPA requires that ed tech companies be under direct control, which very helpfully is not defined. But we do have a little bit of guidance from the Department of Education on some ways that company terms of service might not align with FERPA. For example, be especially aware when a company's terms of service or privacy policy would allow the company to sell or share student data without consent or for random purposes. So direct control likely does not exist under FERPA and therefore you can't share information without consent if in the terms of service or privacy policy, I'll go through these pretty quickly, you can look back at the slides, narrowly defines which personal information is protected by the policy. So maybe says that personal information is only name, date of birth, and email address, which as all of you know after going through the earlier training, uh, is a very narrow interpretation that doesn't cover what FERPA says personal information is. The company may retain the right to share protected personal information that the user is not knowingly providing to the service, such as metadata. Metadata is data about data. So it says how long I've been online. It may say how long a particular phone call was. It may provide information about, uh, you know, where you were when you took a picture. All of that could technically be linked back to you. It's unlikely to be, but it might be. And if a company defines personal information too narrowly and excludes metadata, that may not be okay under FERPA. If the company says that they can share de-identified information, that's okay, unless they have a broad definition of what constitutes de-identified information that would easily allow someone to track back exactly who that particular student is or who they might be. So we talked a little bit about this in previous training sessions. Basically, de-identified information is information that cannot be traced back again to a particular student by your average person. And so if a company is too narrow, then this means that, again, not okay under FERPA. If the company says they can use student data to market or advertise to students or their parents, or minor scan data and user content for the purpose of advertising or marketing to students or their parents, probably not okay under FERPA. Ads in and of themselves are probably okay as long as they're not using the data to then market or advertise to students or their families. It's a difficult line, but you can manage it. Um, if the company says that they may modify the terms of the agreement at any time without notice or consent from the school or district, not okay. If they can collect data about the student beyond what is needed to do whatever you're asking them to do to fulfill that educational purpose, probably not all right under FERPA. It can also be a red flag if the provider collects data from a third party source, so from another website often. If the student logs into the service through a third party website, such as a social networking site. 
don't worry too much about that provision, unless you're a techie, in which case you understand what that means. So direct control also likely does not exist if the third party can use data for any purpose other than the purpose for which it was originally provided without notice and new consent from users. It does not exist if the third party can use certain student personally identifiable information after it's no longer needed or after the school or district re requires that that information be deleted. It may not require their subcontractors to adhere to the service provider's terms of service. Direct control may not exist if the third party is claiming ownership over the student data or copyright or an irrevocable license to use student data or uploaded school or student user content. Note that there may be a difference. They may claim some sort of limited license or limited copyright in order to just display that information. That's usually okay. But if they're actually claiming ownership or an irrevocable license, that's where you run into trouble. There may be a problem if they in any way limit the school or district's access to student information when requested. That includes your access to that information when requested. And if they don't mention security protections. All of this links back to a very helpful model terms of service document from the Department of Education that you can check out in the comments. So how does this apply to your role? Every teacher and administrator should be aware that FERPA requires them to protect student data. And as you can tell from everything I just went through, that's not at all easy. We're applying a pretty sophisticated legal analysis on everything you're doing day to day. And so when you're in doubt about whether sh sharing student data is okay, go ahead and ask. It's much easier to ask ahead of times. And it's very difficult and in some cases impossible to try to get data back once it is shared online. And as I said, FERPA was really made more for schools than for teachers, as you can tell from previous slides. This can be a really legally gray area, um, especially when teachers sign up for ed tech products that collect student information without school authorization or parent permission. Other laws that may apply, you may hear about the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. To be very clear, COPPA does not apply to schools, and there are no penalties for school violations of COPPA. You could certainly get in trouble as an individual educator uh, if the school has a policy that, you know, some aspects of COPPA need to be followed, such as getting consent from parents of students under the age of 18 before using any technology. But there are not going to be any penalties from the federal agency that oversees COPPA, the Federal Trade Commission. A school as a whole might acquire some COPPA parental consent obligations via a contract. So when you click OK on those terms of service or privacy policy, there may be some legal obligations attached to that. And that's where you might get a little in trouble. So if COPPA is implicated, schools, instead of parents can sometimes provide consent for the disclosure of personal information from students under the age of 13 to a company, but only if that company will use student information solely for the benefit of the school, for an educational purpose, not for any commercial purpose. So for example, look for practices like whether a tool uses third-party trackers for advertising purposes, which then would veer over into commercial purpose and would likely mean that you'd have to get parental consent. Other possible things that could constitute a commercial purpose, we don't have official guidance here, include if they are selling particular products if they are uh, providing some sort of targeted advertising, if they are uh, 
pushing students, uh, in addition to whatever educational purpose, to sign up for something where the student would have to pay for a course or turn over data about themselves. Um, all of that might qualify as a commercial purpose, at which point you'd have to go back to the beginning and get parental consent. So, as I mentioned, how does COP apply to you? It mostly doesn't, but a very, very useful tip. First and foremost, if the company says anything about users under the age of 13 in their privacy policy, it is possible that they're not COPPA compliant, which means that they might be engaging in targeted advertising, uh, in uh, selling or sharing uh, information, or other things that not only violate COPPA, but might also violate FERPA. So it's a good flag when you see that users under the age of 13 cannot use a website to move an app that you're looking at through the district vetting process or whatever process you have for adopting new apps and checking them for privacy or security. Also, if a website or app crosses from educational to commercial, it should raise a COPPA flag for you and you should check with school administrators and or get parental consent. But remember, consent isn't necessarily optimal. Why is that? It feels like you could just go around all of the legalese I just gave you if you just got consent. But you run into some trouble when you rely on consent. So first of all, Having parents consent to every tool used in the classroom can create a scenario where a parent might say no, <laughs> where you would have to have a master list of every app and every service that an individual student is permitted or not permitted to use and tailor your lessons accordingly. And parents can't be required to waive their FERPA rights. And students, once the rights transfer to them at age 18 or when they are in a post-secondary school, cannot be required to waive their FERPA rights either, which means that you either need to use a FERPA exception in order to share the information and comply with the requirements of that exception, or you need to get consent and allow people the option to say no if you're going to rely on consent. So relying on consent could also create uneven assessment and measurement landscapes where you can't compare students to each other or to past performance because maybe they're not all using the same tools because again, parents in this case would have the right to opt out or say no. Most concerning, Having parents consent to every tool or giving them the ability to opt out of particular tools could exacerbate inequalities. So students whose parents, you know, might have multiple jobs, might be unavailable for other reasons, their parents wouldn't necessarily be able to consent to the use of certain products. And so those students might miss out on potential benefits from whatever you're using. What about uh, if you allow people to opt out? Well, in that case, are you allowing an opt out because it's not really privacy protective, in which case you shouldn't use it altogether? So be very conscious of how consent could exacerbate inequities and how in many ways with consent, you're just pushing the burden of checking whether the app has adequate privacy or security down to parents who may be even less well-equipped to look at those considerations than you are. And remember, parents cannot be required to waive those FERPA rights. When you're thinking about whether consent is appropriate, it may be useful to consider what the purpose is of the technology. Is it administrative? Is it core to essentially the plumbing of the school, such as course scheduling or school busing? Is it fundamental instructional material like online homework or learning apps? 
uh, similar to what a textbook would be. Is it related to assessment or measurement, like a standardized test or course assessment? Or is it something that could be optional or is non-educational, such as, you know, a digital school yearbook or PTA fundraising? You can contemplate what is necessary and what may not be and decide whether you want to build up trust with parents and others by allowing them an opportunity if they're uncomfortable with the use of a particular technology to say that they're not comfortable and to not use that. However, if it is core to the pedagogical experience of students in your classroom, then that's something where you likely want to use a FERPA exception. For more information about student data, trust, transparency, and the role of consent, you can check out this report that FPF put out back in 2014. A reflection before we end this module. In this example, what would you do? A teacher wants students to be able to share photographs and videos online, and they identify an app which will allow the sharing. He creates user accounts for all students, including those who opted out of directory information, which we learned about earlier in the training. The terms of service allow the provider to use the information for a variety of non-educational purposes, including selling merchandise. The district discovers that this service is being used and determines that the terms of service do not align with FERPA's requirements. What do you think the district should do? Thank you so much for attending this training.